This is the Automation World Get Your Questions Answered podcast, where we connect with industry experts to get the answers you need about industrial automation technologies. This podcast series is sponsored by Allied Electronics and Automation, carrying the most automation and control brand names in North America. Now, the questions posed in this podcast series all come from automation technology users like yourself across the process and discrete manufacturing industries. I'm David Greenfield, Director of Content for Automation World, and the question we'll be answering in this episode is, how to integrate edge computing with legacy systems? Now, to answer this reader question, we're speaking today with Josh Eastburn and Benson Hoagland of Opto22, a supplier of hardware and software for industrial controllers, I.O., and mobile technologies. So we'll start with you, Josh. You know, before we get into the integration aspects of the reader question, let's start with some basics to get everyone on the same page. And by that, I mean, what exactly is an industrial edge computing device and what's its intended use? Okay, great. Good question. Uh, So to help everybody like you said, get on the same page, I think it's helpful to consider what a consumer edge computing device is. Uh, Because it's something that we've all seen, we're probably using it right now to listen to this podcast, or it's in your pocket. And that, of course, is your smartphone, right? That's an edge computing device for the consumer space. If you look at how mobile computing has developed, uh, you're seeing edge computing in action, right? You can do more with less because you have this supercomputer in Uh, your pocket, right where the digital world and the physical world meet, right? And the global infrastructure has changed to involve and utilize that device differently, right? We have globally distributed content networks and systems that rely on the edge device to share the load. So in an industrial context, uh, there's a, a similar thing going on where you edge computing brings some general purpose computing power to the edge of your network, right? Where the digital world meets the physical world. And you can use that to improve the operation of your infrastructure by sharing the networking or data processing load and to deliver better functionality to the local process. Okay. So explain then, how does that differ from programmable logic controllers, programmable automation controllers, and industrial PCs that have long been used for data collection and data transmission in the plant? Okay. Yeah. So I think it's certainly accurate to say that traditional automation devices have been used for data collection. The data transmission part, if we can, if we can make a fine distinction there, hasn't always been so easy. When we talk about edge computing, we're generally talking about devices that can participate in data exchange with IT systems and IT data formats, Uh, things that are not native to the OT layer, right, where industrial devices have typically been locked into a set of communication protocols or mediums that, that are really only compatible with other industrial devices. Edge computing devices are able to play in a larger arena, right? They help to connect the industrial or OT layers to the enterprise or IT layers natively instead of requiring middleware. Does that make sense? It does. Mm -hmm. So, so given what we've established here on that, you know, are there any key feature functionality aspects of edge computing devices that you'd recommend users be most aware of as they go about assessing their edge computing options? Sure. And, uh, Benson, feel free to to jump in if I miss anything here, but uh, I think we need to keep in mind we're still talking about an industrial environment, right? So ruggedness still matters, agency approvals, and uh, a degree of fault tolerance. Those are necessary considerations. Uh, But we're also touching on some of the bigger picture view when it comes to edge computing. That has to do with this shift in the architecture that I was talking about before, moving towards uh, greater distribution of resources and cooperation between those resources to get things done. Uh, A device that's enabling that kind of system needs to be open, right? Because interoperability is key. At the same time, it also needs to be secure so that so what we see in, in edge computing devices is a degree of security that hasn't been available in traditional automation equipment. Yeah, no, I would obviously agree. The security is paramount. I mean, if you're talking about an edge computing device, you want to have you know, the, 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 the proper um, technologies, the proper uh, capabilities in that system to ensure that, one, that not anybody can access the device, and, and two, it can still freely communicate its information. And so that that becomes a, a, a absolutely a critical component. But also what's important is, is that programming and, and data format flexibility. Uh, and that's what we see with edge computing devices because they're built on 
you know, more standard pl platforms, whether those are processor architectures, whether those are data formats that we're seeing that are prevalent in the uh, Internet of Things and the industrial Internet of Things. Uh, and that's that's going to be uh, more available at an edge computing device that's different than a traditional PLC. So the, con the, the really the, the holy grail, if you will, is how can we take some of these edge computing ideas and the mobile computing movement, if you will, for you know, that we see in smartphones and combine them with these industrial rugged devices uh, all into one system and then also provide that layer of, of security and, and data, um, data transport uh, that, that's key to having these systems interoperable. Okay, thanks for clearing that up. So given these differences between edge computers and controllers that we've been talking about for this initial part of our discussion here uh, today, Give, let's get to the meat of the reader's question, which is, what is the best integration approach when it comes to connecting edge computers to existing systems? And does this differ in any way for OEMs and end users? Okay, so I, I think I'll start with the second part of that first. And uh, I, that's to say, I, I don't think I see a big difference when it comes to the position of OEMs and end users in terms of applying edge computing. If you're looking at edge computing to solve your problems, you're probably coming at it from one of two perspectives. Either you're looking for better functionality in the field or you're looking to evolve your infrastructure. Uh, at Opto22, we encourage people to consider both, right? Take advantage of the functionality to improve performance at the edge, but consider how to do so in a way that could lay the groundwork for uh, a more connected, more scalable system. Or in the case of an OEM, uh, you're designing equipment that can participate in that kind of system, right? Be a component in a, in a connected system that can scale. But that's the general case, right? Uh, there are specific ways that edge computing can be integrated into existing systems. And what we see from our partners is that edge computing devices excel at bridging disparate networks, right? Where you have multiple field buses or IT networks that are divided by firewalls or VLANs. Uh, they can also be used to shore up legacy devices with an extra layer of security, right? Like it's, that's not not there in previous generations of technology. You can You can bring that in, right? To begin laying the groundwork for something you can build on. Uh, and uh, a good example of this, actually, uh, we had a conversation recently with one of our partners from the Philippines. They were contracted to work with a manufacturer in the food industry. And this was a fairly new installation that had various systems for utilities and production. And at some point, someone understood that they were missing out on a big opportunity by not having a way to tune the performance of the whole system, right? They were looking for uh, a layer of business intelligence above uh, their control layer. So uh, this, this partner was brought in to uh, develop uh, a system to help them do that. Right? They began by deploying Groove Epic to give them some supervisory control of their utilities. And then the next phase that they're getting started on right now is what they call the backbone project, right? joining up all the different control networks into the existing Epic network so they can have all of that data available on a common network. Um, so that's an example of, of sort of bridging those systems. right? The other piece that we see uh, is people reducing their dependence on Windows PCs to glue everything together because they can do it all on their edge device, right? Communication servers, database connectivity, custom applications, and so on. They don't need to have a separate box to to do that. They can do that in their existing device. You know, indeed, that's what we're hearing more and more from our customers every day. Uh, it, it, I wouldn't say it's necessarily the elimination of Windows PCs in particular, but the reality is they're much more complex devices than need to be in many of these cases. They have their you know, own set of issues, whether it's Windows updates, whether it's security, whether it's just the, the hardware devices that, uh, you know, the traditional PC that you get nowadays. So people are looking for ways to, you know, to eliminate those where it makes sense. And that means you've got to start taking some of the functionality of what was available on a Windows PC and moving it into these edge devices, whether they're a PLC, an IO system, a data gateway, whatever it might be. But as you're looking at this integration approach, getting back to the reader's, the, the reader's question, it, it comes down to what kind of technology, what kind of edge computing device are, are you going to select or at least evaluate that is not only going to solve your near-term problem, and that may be data translation, data, data moving data around the enterprise, but what's going to give you the path for moving ahead? In other words, what's coming next? Uh, you know, let's go back to that smartphone analogy for a moment. You know, maybe when you got your first smartphone, you didn't ditch your camera. You didn't ditch your navigation system or your music player. You kind of used all of them, you know, 
as much as you may have used them before. But as time went on, you started to use them less and less because there was less need to do that. We're going to see the same thing with edge computing. As it gets rolled out into the plant floor, as it gets rolled out into remote sites, folks are going to start seeing the power that's available down there uh, on an edge computing device. And they're going to realize that they don't need some of these other you know, extraneous devices that they counted on previously. And we're already seeing that, especially in the case of Windows PCs. As more and more folks are rolling out these edge computing devices to solve these problems, they're realizing, hey, I don't need mm -hmm. this Windows PC there, or I don't need this PLC, or I don't need this you know, specific IO system or this specific gateway. I'm getting to a point where I can consolidate all those functions in a, a you know, an industrial rugged edge computing device that covers all of these capabilities. Just to recap, I guess to make sure I'm on the, the same page with what you're saying is when it comes to integration of edge computing devices with existing legacy systems is that end users or OEM should not be looking at this as, as if it's a one and done situation that once they've integrated it, that's the way it's going to be, that this is going to be more of a, an evolutionary course that as they're in place, uh, the integration levels and how it's done and with what it's done with uh, is probably likely going to change over time. Is that correct? Yeah, I was going to gonna jump in on that one. Um, yeah, I, I agree. I think evolve is the right word there. You're looking at where to begin and then you're trying to make decisions at that point of introducing edge computing. You're doing it in a way that's going to let you grow that over time or evolve your architecture over time. And I think, that, yeah, again, you know, pardon for Pardon me for going back to the smartphone analogy so many times, but let's let's look at when, you know, let's even pick one. Let's say the iPhone, for example, introduced in 2007. If you look at the iPhone today, 13 years later, it doesn't physically look much different. What's changed is all the software capabilities of this thing, because it was built upon a platform that would, that would permit um, this advancements in software to be run on these same types of devices. So we're going to start seeing the same thing. In our industry, we're going to see devices, hardware devices of some sort out there, these edge computing devices, and then the software is going to take it to new levels we've never even dreamed of. Uh, and and that's, that's where we see the future and where we see uh, where you know, if you're an OEM, if you're an end user, you want to be looking at these type of platforms that have this path for, for growth, uh, primarily based on software because they are built on technology that is designed to live at the edge. And, and is extensible, secure, and everything else we talked about, but a platform for growth. Interesting. So I guess we'll get to see how this develops over the coming years, and that'll be, uh, that'll be fun and interesting to watch to see where it eventually goes. So base, based on both of your experience with edge computing implementations, I have a, a couple of questions then when it comes to uh, recommendations for our listeners when it, when it comes to their actual uh, integration of these uh, edge devices, however they happen to do it. And the first question is, what have you seen to be the most common pitfalls or oversights that end users make when they're integrating edge computing devices to begin with? So uh, I think we, we maybe we've touched on this a little bit, but well, it's worth reiterating, there are kind of two ways of looking at edge computing. And one is I can have better functionality in the field. And the other is I can have better infrastructure for the future. So it's helpful to, if you're, if you're thinking, oh, should I be applying edge computing, know which one you're looking for, right? If, if you're just trying to do better stuff with your process, then maybe you can drop in a smarter device and run with it. Uh, but, but simply generating more data on the edge won't necessarily help you achieve your long-term infrastructure goals, right? And Benson, this is what Benson was touching on before. You need to be considerate of how you're going to scale that up in the future, right? What are you what are you building on? Are you are you laying a, a groundwork that's going to be open and flexible and scale uh, as you need to, to as you become more connected, right? So the common pitfall uh, there would be maybe using the same approach you've always used, right? Or painting yourself into a corner, so to speak, with multiple layers of devices and PCs, pri proprietary protocols, uh, instead of using that edge power to consolidate your functionality and lay some groundwork that you can build on. And conversely, from you know the pitfalls or oversight angle, the, the second part of that question uh, that I have is, what would be the optimal integration approach uh, that end users should take, both for initial use uh, of the edge computing device once it's installed, as well as from a future flexibility point of view? 
As far as an optimal approach, we encourage people to start at the edge. I mentioned before that one approach you could take is to shore up your legacy equipment by adding this layer of connectivity and security to uh, to legacy devices that you know without wasn't a consideration yet, right? And that's a great approach for most existing installations. You can build up that layer of connectivity and security, and you do it in a way that's going to be open to sharing data with other systems. And then you can build on top of that as as your as your needs grow or as there's more demand from back office headquarters systems to have access to that data that's out in the field. Benson, you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I think that's uh, one of the, the cool things that we are seeing with with edge computing devices is their flexibility and extensibility, primarily from a software perspective. I mean, let's let's take a look at what we're doing with the Groove Epic system. Not only is it a PLC, a visualization tool, a data gateway and so on. But it, it encourages folks to run other types of software to deal with a given issue, a given problem. Uh, for example, once again, your smartphone, you're going to have certain apps on your phone that are designed to do a given task. Uh, and it's something that you might be familiar with. But that may be very different than the next person who has a different set of apps for a different set of tasks and has a different comfort level. You're going to see the same thing with industrial edge devices. So, for example, the Groove Epic system will run an ignition edge software from inductive automation. And that provides a very unique set of tools that uh, is terrific for SCADA systems. It will run on the edge uh, and allow it to collect data and, and translate and move that data into the enterprise systems very easily and very quickly. Uh, and the same thing you'll see over, uh, say, from Sepasoft, who uh, develops an OEE uh, tool that runs at the edge again and can start to manipulate that data right at the edge and then move it into other components of the system. But both of those examples uh, are about the software and about what that software running on an edge device can do to help your enterprise or help you build an infrastructure for future growth. I think that's the key thing when we're talking about that optimal integration approach is what can you do with these systems and what will you be able to do with them in the future? Well, thank you very much for joining me for this podcast, Josh and Benson. I appreciate your input. And thanks to all of our listeners for joining us as well. And please keep watching this space for more installments of Automation World Get Your Questions Answered. And remember to visit our website at www.automationworld.com to stay on top of the latest industrial automation technology insights, trends, and news.